Welcome to the fourth episode of the LH Stinger build. Today we're going to be building the frame. Let's get going. Before we get started on today's video, I just want to go through the CAD model briefly. So we're going to go ahead and just hide everything that we don't want. We'll want to show the Z linear rails and also the spacer tool. At this point, we can go into the settings and hide the ghosting. This is under Ghost Hidden Objects. This will allow us to see only what we want to work on. You can zoom in and out by scrolling your mouse wheel. We'll use this function to explode the model. This is really handy when you're trying to figure out small details, such as if there should be a spacer or a washer. As you can see here, everything's displayed nice and simply, exactly where it needs to go. Click the properties of an item to see what's needed. For example, here's a T-nut, and we know that it's a 3030 M3 T-nut. We can select screws, washers, or even if there's a part you just don't know what it's called. We can unexplode and select the individual items. There's a washer, there's an M6 screw, and there's our corner bracket. So I hope this helps you when you come to build your LH Stinger, and I'll post a link in the video description to the creator's website where there's a great documentation on using the CAD models. And now without further ado, Let's get into the build. If you've been following along, you'll know that I've already created the y-axis. So I'm going to adjust my numbers here. Next, I'm going to need 20 3030 M6 T-nuts and four 3030 M3 T-nuts. It's a very useful guide on the LH Stinger wiki that shows you exactly where these should go. I'll post a quick screenshot here. So first, we'll need our 3090 extrusion. This is the base of the printer. And we'll begin loading T-nuts, paying extra special attention to the orientation of the part. If we don't load our T-nuts now, we won't be able to install them once the ends are installed. Next we'll need our corner brackets, four M6 by 12 screws, and four M6 by 12 by 1.6 millimeter washers. We'll install these on the ends, like so, and install our M6 screws using the washers. At this point, we can preload our T-nuts onto the nut and washer. This will allow us to easily slide in the extrusion. Now we can slide in our upright extrusions. I'm going to fit both to demonstrate, but it makes sense to do one of these at a time. You'll want an engineer's square to ensure that the frame is as square as possible. I'm using a DIN 875 square, which is highly recommended in the original bill of materials. I like to install that on the inside. And just check that there's no light bleeding around the edges. We can check that the side profile is aligned. And it makes sense to keep going backwards and forwards. And double check that everything is aligned as it should be. And once you're confident everything is nice and square, you can tighten everything up. Don't forget to use your Loctite at this point. I did, and have to take everything apart again. And once you're confident everything is nice and square, you can tighten everything up. Double and triple checking that everything is square in all directions. And then simply repeat this process for the other side. And here we have the basis of our main frame. It should be pretty stable now and hold itself square nicely. And this is a great opportunity to check that everything's still square. And mine looks great, so moving on to the next part. For this you'll need the M6 14mm countersunk screw. The M8 16mm button head screw, two M6 T-nuts. And finally, your two corner brackets with the M8 hole drilled. You can pre-install your countersunk screw and your M6 T-nut at this stage. Not forgetting your Loctite. Add this into the profile from the end. And then once again, adding Loctite, fix your M8 by 16 button head screw. Cure everything in place. As always, you can check for squaring again at this point. And when you feel everything is square, tighten those down. Next we'll install our lower frame joints. Those look like this. To install these, we'll need another two M8 by 16 
button head screws and two M6 by 10 button head screws. Using plenty of Loctite, loosely attach the M6 to the T-nuts that we installed earlier. You don't need to tighten them down at this point, we want them to slide back and forward. Then take our M8 screws, again adding Loctite, and screw these into the lower profile. And we will be left with one hole, unused. You can now tighten down all four of these M8 screws, followed by the M6 screws. Next we can install the self-adhesive rubber feet. The creator of the LH Stinger has advised that these are too rigid and we should really use a softer foam, but this is all we have for now. And this is how they look fully installed. Next we'll install our linear rails. For this, we'll need 12 M3 T-nuts, 12 12mm cap head screws, and of course our Loctite and linear rails. We'll start by pre-installing our 12mm cap head screws and M3 T-nuts. These have two at the bottom and then one every other screw hole. We'll do this so that they can be slid in from the top easily. We'll do this for both sides, taking extra care to not allow the carriage to slide off the end of the rail. We can then slide in our carriages. We can then slide in our rails by the T-nuts from the top of the rail. And using the small helper tool, this will space the rail away from the lower bracket. At this point I like to just snug up one of the screws to keep it still. And then using the tools, and then using the alignment tools, at least two of these, tighten your rail screws from the middle outwards. Again, taking extra care not to lose your carriage at this point. And the carriage should easily sit between two of the screws. Do this for both sides. And tighten all screws in the middle outwards direction. I like to move my spacers. I like to move my tools up and down. This just helps ensure that the rail is nice and central. Be sure to reinstall the little black stoppers in your rails. This just stops the carriage coming off the end before we install our end stop. And that's the linear rails installed. And now we can move on to the final part, installing the top of the gantry. We'll need our two corner brackets, four M6 by 12 screws, and four M6 washers, and four M6 tina. Next you'll need these corner brackets, and these simply slide into the top of the extrusion. Be sure to add Loctite to your grub screws. And on the opposite side of these, you can install your corner brackets. Being sure to preload your M3 T-nuts first. There should be four of those on the front. And this is what you're left with. Pay special attention to the direction of the corner brackets and also ensure that you have your four M3 T-nuts preloaded. The little prongs on top of the corner brackets should be facing in the same direction as the M3 T-nuts. And for assembly, those same prongs point towards the back of the printer. And now you can slot in the whole top frame section, align your T-nuts, and then everything should push down flat. You'll want your corner brackets in the same slot as your linear rails. And once everything is pushed down square, and use your square to check for the frame squareness. Once you're certain that everything is square, tighten up your corner brackets on the inside, like we did on the lower frame. Next we'll want to install our grub screws. We'll install grub screws in all of the remaining holes, not forgetting to add Loctite to our grub screws. We'll install grub screws, both here and here, and on the outside of the frame. There are two holes on the top of the printer. These won't need grub screws. Finally, clean off any overspilled Loctite and locate your printed parts. Those look like this. These are simply a press fit bezel that go into the top of the extrusions. These can be a little fiddly to fit, but wiggle them around and maybe give them a little tap and they should sit down flush. And that concludes the assembly of the LH Stinger frame. Join me next time when I'll be connecting the Y axis to the frame and assembling the Z axis.
As a disclaimer, this kit was provided free of charge by Pfizer for research and review purposes. However, they have no input in the outcome of this or any videos on the channel and will not see this video before you. Thank you for watching and if you don't want to miss the next leg of our Stinger journey, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications and I welcome your comments and feedback on the videos and projects. If you want to get your own LH Stinger kit, you can find them at the links in the video description as well as several useful resources such as the LH Stinger GitHub and Git Discord server. I want to thank Lima Hayes, the creator of the LH Stinger, for his cooperation and guidance, and our official filament sponsor, Filamentive, who have provided us with a huge batch of filament for this and many of our next projects.